This is Dr. Lam welcoming you to our discussion on stage 3B, adrenal fatigue syndrome. Stage 3B is also called hormonal axis imbalance. Remember that the whole stage 3 itself is called adrenal exhaustion. It has four phases. And stage 3A is usually characterized by HPA axis dysregulation. While in stage 3B, we're starting to see a hormonal axis imbalance, which we're going to go into more now. Now remember that the body's hormonal modulation is controlled by different axes. And axes are simply a way for us to group the function of the hormones from various glands into one single unit because they tend to behave as a consolidated item. Now there are upstream axes which includes the HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, that modulate the adrenal cortex function in terms of steroidal hormone synthesis. There's also the HPG or the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal hormonal axis which governs the female's ovarian and menstrual cycle. One axis that is seldom looked at is the OAT axis. Now remember the HPA as well as the HPG axis are what we call upstream axis in the sense that they connect the brain, which is the hypothalamus, to the endocrine organ. Now the OAT axis governs the function between the ovarian system, the adrenal system, as well as the thyroid. So that's why it's called the OAT axis, as you can see from this diagram here. So that's the OAT axis. In stage 3B, as HPA dysregulation occurs in 3A, leading to hypoglycemic low blood pressure, and a slight catabolic state advances, then in women, the downstream hormonal axis becomes further dysregulated, and in men, it will have the dysregulation of the AT axis. Now, we will go into OAT axis first, and it's important to understand that in the woman, while we concentrate more on the OAT axis, the application is the same for male, except that, you, of course, you take away the ovarian system, but the person does have low libido. So taking a step back, what we like to know is to see that the ovarian system, the adrenal system, and the thyroid system are well balanced. They are like a three-legged stool, and you cannot really sit safely on this stool unless all three are in good balance. Now, the problem clinically is what we see when you have an ovarian adrenal thyroid axis imbalance because you see the symptoms are really convoluted because they represent dysfunction of all three groups, and it can be quite misleading. So the common symptoms include insomnia, fatigue, myalgia, weight gain, joint pain, exercise intolerance, brain fog, sugar intolerance, maybe borderline diabetes, dry skin, feeling cold, slow metabolism, inability to lose weight, PMS, endometriosis, irregular menstrual cycle, fibrocystic breast disease, anxiety, depression, and accumulation of fat at the waistline. Now, this group of convoluted symptoms is overwhelming to even the best of physicians because they're simply quite massive in nature. But generally, you can divide them up into three classes. Obviously, all the PMS, endometriosis represent estrogen type problem that's tied into the ovarian system. The dry skin, uh, the low metabolism tied into the thyroid and the rest ties into the adrenal system. Now, it's very important you have to understand is that even for women that have their ovary removed, they can still have the OAT axis imbalance because estrogen production and modulations are involved not only in the ovaries, but also at other places, including the adrenal glands, as well as the fat cells or the adipose tissues where estrogen is produced. So therefore, those who have stress as well as overweight are particularly vulnerable to estrogen dominance, even though they may have a complete hysterectomy for whatever issues they had before. Now, OAT axis imbalance is still a very new entity. What we know comes from clinical observation and much more research is needed. So at this point, we need to make sure that we don't call this a disease state because we still have much we don't know. But what we do know is that this situation is very common and when the OAT axis is not balanced, you can have many, many other problems that arises. Let's go through the following key points. First, the body's hormonal organs are tied closely together to various axes, the lesser known OAT axis as well as the more better known HPA axis regulate the stress system. Number two, when the OAT axis is disrupted, there's an imbalance of hormones that leads to symptoms of estrogen dominance, low energy, which is adrenal involvement, as well as hypothyroidism. 
Number three, each portion of the OAT axis affects the other in balances of one will worsen the other and vice versa. Such as estrogen dominance will worsen adrenal function, which in turn will aggravate estrogen dominance. Adrenal fatigue syndrome also lowers thyroid function, which in turn will worsen adrenal fatigue itself. The OAT axis imbalance is often missed. The symptoms of AFS and hypothyroidism are very similar, and therefore sufferers are oftentimes treated for hypothyroidism when the underlying problem is adrenal function. It is very common to stimulate the thyroid function in an attempt to reduce fatigue. This strategy often fails over time and makes AFS worsen if indeed adrenal fatigue is a problem. Within the OAT axis, each component of the axis is not equally damaged. One of the components is usually more damaged than the others and presents itself as a dominant symptom and therefore it masks the other symptoms. Knowing which component axis is dominant is important because this will allow the clinician to structure a recovery program that's most appropriate. This is Dr. Lam and I hope you enjoy our discussion on the stage 3B ovarian adrenal axis imbalances as well as the AT axis imbalance which is classical for hormonal axis imbalance as a whole that characterizes this stage of adrenal fatigue syndrome.